This was one of the most viral videos of 2013. A clueless rally driver driving into onlookers and his pissed off co-driver scolding him like an angry parent. And boy, did this thing go viral. Articles, social media posts, reaction videos, everyone and their mother saw these three and a half minutes of chaos and made sure their Facebook friends did too. But it turns out it wasn't exactly real. The footage was doctored. The driver in the video wasn't some two-bit rookie. He's actually a rally driver with over 20 years of experience, and the video, well, that was made by one of his rivals. But we'll get to the guy that made the video soon. First, we need to talk about the driver, Samir Topper, an Indian businessman. He was part of the Topper bloodline, a family empire to say the least. His grandfather, Karam, founded one of India's largest conglomerates that became known as the Topper Group. And to this day, Samir Topper is the chairman and managing director of JCT Limited, a leading textile manufacturer and the flagship company under the Topper Group conglomerate. So, how does a rich businessman become a decorated rally driver. Well, it's simple. Rally driving ain't cheap. Samir's racing career wasn't weekend getaways in a bug eye WRX. He had a full on racing team with mechanics, sponsors, and high end builds. And naturally, you needed some deep pockets to get to this stage of rally. Samir always had a love for motorsports, and his mainstream rally career began at the Indian Rallying Championship in 1992, over 20 years before that viral video that made him famous. Turns out, Samir wasn't half bad, and by 1996, he found himself on his first podium at the Karnataka 1000 rally behind the wheel of a Maruti Suzuki Esteem. It was his first major win and it was a huge milestone for his growing career as an amateur driver. But his stint in rally was cut short because after 1997, he had to retire. Samir had a company to run and he had business commitments that needed urgent attention. But in his mind, this was only supposed to be a temporary retirement. That is, until an ATV accident seriously injured him and put a question mark on his driving career. So that was it. 1997's short business break turned into an indefinite hiatus. But it wouldn't be until 10 years after that in 2013 that Samir would finally lace up his racing boots properly the same year that a viral video would change his entire life. You know what's worse than a viral video though? Ugh. I feel awful. Of course you do. You sit around all day, you eat junk food, so naturally your immune system's gonna suck. When's the last time you had something nutritious? Is candy nutritious? Oh, but it's so hard to eat healthy stuff. Not anymore. It's no surprise that my immune system is awful. So what did I do? Well, I got AG1. AG1 is a once a day nutritional drink with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. And for somebody with as bad of a diet as me, AG1 is the perfect way to support my immune system, maintain my gut health, and keep me focused when I need to research obscure JDM racing teams. Just one scoop in the morning and I'm good to go with sustained energy throughout the day. And most importantly, peace of mind that I'm getting comprehensive nutrition without having to take a million things or meal prep like I'm Ronnie Coleman. So if you wanna feel as good as I feel, Click the link in the description to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs free with your first purchase. Thank you to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Samir's return to rally was behind the wheel of a new car as well, a Mitsubishi Evo 10, commissioned under his own racing team, JCT Rallying. Naturally, Samir was a bit rusty after his long break from racing, but this was the perfect race to return to, the rally of Coimbatore in July. And while the stakes weren't drastic enough to sweat over, it was still a challenging enough event for Samir to get back into the groove of things. And next to every good rally driver is, of course, a good co-driver. The Navigator. In this case, Samir's co-driver was Vivek Bonusami, a racing diehard with over 16 years of experience in rally. Vivek had just come off wins in 2011 at the Malaysian Rally Championship and in 2012 at the Asia Pacific Rally Championship. So unlike Samir, there was no rust to work off for Vivek. And so they strapped themselves into that Evo 10 and set off into the rally. The first stage went rather well. Honestly, maybe a little too well. Samir was a little rusty, sure, but he was wheeling that Evo far better than any of us could drive. And he and Vivek were starting to mesh pretty well too, having done only one event together prior to this one. But then, 
we get to the fourth stage, and that's where things got a little choppy. The run was less than desirable for the two of them. There was frustration. Medium left, medium left, medium left, turn and turn. There was confusion. Get the fast. And perhaps worst of all, there was a lack of communication. And all of it was caught on their in-car GoPro camera. You see, rally is a sport that requires a tremendous level of trust and understanding between both drivers. Because one wrong move and the consequences could be deadly. And well, it was clear that that understanding wasn't there between Samir and Vivek. Thankfully, nothing terrible happened in their run, but they did end up retiring the car due to issues. And so they uploaded the 40 minutes of raw footage from all of their stages as they usually did. And well, that footage wasn't anything different from what you'd see in other rally POV videos. Sure, there were some funny one-liners, but not enough to call it 40 minutes of meme content. But unfortunately for them, there was enough to make three and a half minutes of meme content. You see, somebody clipped together all of the most hilarious moments from those stages and then uploaded the compilation video to the internet. And that video went absolutely swine flu viral. The video was jam packed with hilarious quips from Vivek and even had Samir angrily telling Vivek to shut up. It was quality content and clearly more than a few people thought so with the original video skyrocketing to over a million views seemingly overnight. Truly some of the best automotive meme content ever. It was so relatable after all. Anyone riding shotgun in a Nissan Altima knew how Vivek felt. And anyone who's ever had a noisy backseat driver could now channel Samir saying shut up. Every major motorsports publication was covering the video in articles and on social media and the video would go on to reach over 7 million viewers. But what all of us who were laughing at home didn't realize was that there were precisely two people who weren't laughing with us. And that's because what seemed like a harmless video was actually part of a much more devious plot. Even though the video made Samir seem like a no Fs given hardcore rally driver, it also made him look careless, like a novice in the rally world. And for somebody with decades of rally experience, this was a huge blow to his reputation. But also, Samir was rich. Rally may have been his passion, but he clearly had bigger things to account for in his life. And if Rally slipped away, he would be okay. But then there was Vivek. And well, Vivek wasn't rich like Samir was. Rally racing is what he woke up every single day for. But as I'm sure many of you watching know, three short minutes can seemingly ruin your reputation forever. That video made Vivek look totally incompetent. A navigator that was completely incapable of assisting his driver, one with a short fuse and a lack of respect. And that video, ended up costing Vivek what seemed like his entire career. His image in the rally community was tarnished and opportunities that he had lined up were being rescinded. Doors were being shut in his face. It even went so far that he lost a huge contract in an upcoming rally in Australia. A freaking meme video basically ruined his life. And understandably, he was pissed. So he did the only thing that he could think to do and took his problem to the authorities. He explained that this video caused him significant defamation and that it violated the Indian Penal Code Section 66A of the Information Technology Amendment, a rather controversial law in today's world, one that could severely punish somebody for making fun of another person on the internet, however harmless it seemed. So naturally, local authorities had to investigate the crime and they discovered that nothing about this video was harmless. It turned out the video was made and posted by a man named Johan Setna, the team manager of an opposing racing team in India. What many thought was just a compilation video made by some meme lord kid somewhere on the other side of the planet was in fact a direct attempt at defamation by one of Samir and Vivek's competitors. And once this was discovered, the police found him, arrested him, and charged him after getting a full confession. The police investigator would go on to explain that the proof of defamation was that the original long form video received no adverse comments, but that the edited and doctored video that had went viral had completely removed all context, thus made Vivek look like an incapable navigator ruining his reputation. It seemed like a big win for Vivek, who was really trying to find some way to get back control of his life, but, the legal system of India is such that a case of grown men making silly videos of each other on the internet 
wasn't really a priority. And so the very next day, Johann Setna was released. And that was that. According to police, there wasn't really a malicious relationship amongst the involved parties before the upload. And Johan explained that all he did was cut up a long video to highlight its funny moments. Illegal in India? Probably. Ill-intended? Possibly. Career-ending? Potentially. But kind of funny still. Precisely. Honestly, I'm not sure what Vivek expected the outcome of that police case to be, but for Samir, well, it turns out it didn't matter much. When you're bankrolling the whole team, it doesn't really matter what happens. And he continued to race in his Evo with varying levels of success until 2016, where he retired. Rally took a backseat once before after all, and well, he was a wealthy businessman. He had other things in life to indulge in. And as for the villain in our story, well, Johann Setna moved on with his life. He dabbled in motorsports riding, having written an article for Evo magazine in 2020, but otherwise remained pretty behind the scenes. And as for Vivek Ponusami, well, he bounced back. Racing was his die-hard passion after all. He managed to get back into that Australian roster and continued co-driving until his retirement in 2017. Today, he's in charge of his own company, Mentor Tires in Australia, a company specializing in racing rubber. So it's safe to say that he turned out okay. But still, it's crazy to think that a funny meme video from a decade ago could have so much bad blood behind it. Luckily, it seems like it ended up fine for all parties involved, but none more so than ourselves. Because, well, no matter what, we'll always have. Sammy, Sammy, you are wrecking the car. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and join us on Discord to chat about the latest video. I'll see you in the next one.